All right, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It is time to get a check or take a look at what's happening out there in the tropics. Of course, we are into the final month of hurricane season. We're getting through this week, getting closer to the weekend. And of course, all this week we've been monitoring Raphael and wondering, will it head towards Texas? So. I'll have an update on that and of course anything else brewing out there in the tropics. But first, let's look at the main event. This is of course Hurricane Raphael and notice that Yes, it is firmly and fully within the Gulf of Mexico right now. Yesterday, of course, it rolled over the western portion of Cuba, made landfall as a major category three hurricane and just lashed the western portion of Cuba with winds at times over 100 miles per hour, several inches of rain, mudslides, a lot of power outages reported. So thank goodness, Rafael has weakened a bit and it is moving away from Cuba. Also, we had the Florida Keys under tropical storm warnings due to the fact that Rafael passed to the west. So at least Rafael is now moving away from Cuba and moving away from the Florida Keys. It is still a powerful category two hurricane in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, but right now not really close to threatening any additional land areas at the moment. So hopefully it will remain that way. Let me give you the latest coordinates with Raphael. This is as of the 3 p.m. advisory. We've got maximum sustained winds around 105 miles per hour. So that makes Raphael a category two hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. It is moving to the west northwest around nine miles per hour and pressure right around 968 millibars. So we we are going to be dealing with the potential for Raphael to potentially strengthen a little bit more. But overall, as it pushes farther west into the Gulf of Mexico, it will start to run into some drier air and it will encounter a more hostile environment. Basically, it's going to run into what we call shear. Those are some stronger winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and that will kind of help to weaken it gradually as we go into the weekend and early next week. So let me put this into motion, and you will see that we do have Raphael that will be moving basically to the west or west northwest as we go through the next two to three days, still maintaining that hurricane status category two, then down to category one by Friday night into Saturday. Then as we go into Sunday, Monday, weakening to a tropical storm as it encounters that more hostile environment in the south, central and western portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Here's additional good news. Notice towards Monday and even into Tuesday, Raphael, as it weakens to a tropical storm, kind of starts to shift from the west to more of a southwesterly direction. So it is actually likely going to push down into parts of the Bay of Campeche as we go into Monday and Tuesday of next week. So that's good news for us here in Houston. That means it will be moving farther away from us. So any significant impacts are highly unlikely. In fact, the only thing we'll likely get from this would be a higher risk for some rip currents through the weekend down around Galveston Beach and up towards the Bolivar Peninsula. So notice as I put this into motion even more, you can see that more southerly southwesterly shift. This is especially happening on Tuesday of next week, so that would take it farther away from Houston. It gets even weaker down to 40 miles per hour by noon on Tuesday, so that would take it closer to potentially a Mexico landfall if it even makes landfall. It could actually just fall apart over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. We're hoping that happens. We're hoping it doesn't impact any additional areas and it just falls apart out there over the open waters of the Gulf. But of course, like I said, the good news for us, it is not heading in our direction. So let me show you what the spaghetti plots are currently showing. These are several different computer models, basically depicting where they think Hurricane Raphael will go. And there is only one computer model out of several showing it trying to get into the southwestern Louisiana coast. Southeast Texas coast, very close to Houston, but all of the rest of the models keep it away from us. And those are the models that we are leaning towards and going with at this point. Notice most of the models kind of have it in the central Gulf of Mexico, kind of doing a little loop and then kind of heading to the south. So it is not 
expected to head in our direction. So that is certainly some good news. So we'll continue to monitor Hurricane Raphael closely, but like I said, all indications are that it will stay away from us. Here's the main reason why it will stay away from us. Our GFS future cast showing a cold front that will come barreling into the Houston area late Friday and Saturday and then kind of stall out over us on Sunday. But it is going to push through and move far enough to the east to where it should block Raphael from heading in our direction. So that's why the computer models basically have Raphael kind of stalling out in the Gulf of Mexico and most of them have it moving south if you have it moving north, but none of those models are going to bring it directly into the Houston area, likely because we do have that cold front that will be pushing through the area. So once again, some good news, Raphael not expected to move towards the Houston area or any parts of the southeastern Texas area. As far as additional tropical storm formation, hurricane formation for the rest of this month, chances are low. It's not impossible, but if we were to get anything, the best shot is going to be over towards the Western Atlantic and also down around the Western and West Central parts of the Caribbean Sea. That's where we are going to be looking for a low chance at least for some potential development. Also, there's a low chance where you see the yellow shaded area across parts of the central Atlantic. But bottom line, last few weeks of hurricane season, things usually kind of starting to wind down as those water temperatures get a little bit cooler. And as we start to see stronger fronts start to push into the area and out into the Gulf of Mexico. However, we do have one other disturbance that we're monitoring. This is an area of disturbed, disorganized showers and storms in the northern Leeward Islands region. This is going to be in the southwestern Atlantic. So notice it's not really looking too organized now, but we do have that burst of convection showers and storms. So the potential for some heavy rain for the northern Leeward Islands over towards Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican Republic. If this system were to get its act together, the chance right now is low, but over the next two to seven days, if the system were to get organized, the next name on the list would be Sarah and it likely would be drifting to the west northwest. So it could make it into parts of the central southeastern Bahamas. But check it out that chance for development over the next 48 hours and over the next seven days on the low side, only a 20% chance that this is going to blow up and become a tropical depression or maybe tropical storm or hurricane Sarah. But of course, we are here to monitor it if that does happen, there's a low shot, then we will let you know, but highly unlikely it would head in our direction. We've already had enough action for this hurricane season. In fact, we've already had 17 named storms. We've had 10 hurricanes and out of those five have become major hurricanes. Those major hurricanes so far for the 2024 season have been Beryl. We also had Helene, Kirk, Milton, and of course, Raphael that briefly strengthened to a major category three hurricane yesterday afternoon before making a landfall in Cuba. So like I said, the next name on the list would be Sarah. Then we'd have Tony, Valerie and William. But the hope is that things will start to simmer down and calm down out there in the Atlantic Basin and we won't have to use any more of these names. But of course, there's still that 20% chance that we might have to use Sarah because we could have another tropical system developing near the northern Leeward Islands over the next two to seven days. So bottom line, it's been an above average hurricane season. Normally for an entire season, we'd have about 14 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. So far this season, we've had 17 named storms, 10 hurricanes, and five major hurricanes. So as I've been mentioning the last few days, we have officially reached that predicted range from NOAA of 17 to 24 named storms for this season, eight to 13 hurricanes, and four to seven major hurricanes. So it's already been an above average season. You're probably thinking enough already, and I agree with that. It would be nice for things to just shut down completely. So hopefully we can start to get more of these cold fronts through here, cooling off some of the this water in the Gulf. It's starting to get a little bit cooler, but it's still warm enough to basically help to sustain any tropical system that might develop. We've still got water temps into the low 80s for much of the Gulf of Mexico, western, northwestern part to the Caribbean, still temps mainly in the 80s, getting a little bit cooler for the western Atlantic, those water temps in the upper 70s, but overall, 
it's still fairly warm water for November. So we are monitoring this area closely to see if we could potentially get any additional development. However, we are marching right along through the month of November and in just a couple of weeks, we can say goodbye, adios, see you later to the 2024 hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin, of course, officially ending on November 30th. And notice that usually there's a decline in tropical action during this time of the season. So that is what we are expecting. So once we get rid of Raphael, hopefully Sarah won't develop and that will be it. But of course, if we do see anything else out there that could be tropical trouble for us, we'll be here keeping you updated minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. So make sure to check us out every afternoon with this tropical update all the way through the last day of hurricane season, which I said ends on November 30th. Well, that will do it for your tropical update for today. Once again, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shades. Stay safe out there and enjoy the rest of your day.